Welcome to episode 32 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today I will show you how to generate SVG vector files so you can scale them without losing quality. First we need a node, so go to Manager and then Custom Nodes Manager. Search for SVG and install the Comfy UI to SVG node by Yannick. Once installed, click on Restart and confirm that you want to reboot. Wait for the installation to finish. Comfy UI will open in the same tab and ask for a refresh. Now we are ready to create the workflow. Double click on the canvas, add a load image node, and upload the image you want to convert to a vector. It works best with clear black and white designs, but you can use more complex images as well. Next, search for SVG and you'll have access to a few nodes. The first one lets you save the SVG, just like other save nodes for images. The second one allows you to convert a vector to a raster. Rasters are images and photos you generate based on pixels, not vectors. The third one is for converting raster to vector. BW stands for black and white. The last one is for color vectors. Since my image is black and white, I will select the third option. Now connect the image output to the image input. We also need to save the SVG, so let's add this node and connect them. When I run the workflow, it will convert the image to an SVG file. If I check the output folder, I can see the SVG file there. You may not see a preview and it might show an Internet Explorer icon. I have installed a free app from Microsoft called Power Toys. In Power Toys, go to File Explorer add-ons where you can enable an option called Scalable Vector Graphics. The button to toggle it is located on the far right, off screen. Alternatively, we can save a PNG to preview the result. Let me change the prefix to SVG so it's shorter. Then I'll add another node called Vector to Raster because I want to convert it back to a PNG file for preview purposes. I'll then add a preview or save node for that raster image and change the prefix to PNG. Now when I run the workflow, I get both an SVG and a PNG so I can see how it looks. Once the workflow is ready, I can open another image like this gnome. When I run it, I get the gnome in black instead of gray because we use the black and white version of the node. Here we have another option for the mode. You can choose polygon when you have a design with straight edges as it creates nice clean lines. However, in this case, it doesn't work well because it adds straight lines to some parts of the design. I prefer spline for this as it creates smooth curved shapes. There are more settings available that are useful when your original image has more colors and gradients. You can adjust how much of that is picked up when converting to a vector. Now we have both a PNG and an SVG file, and we can open the SVG in vector software like Adobe Illustrator, Inkscape, Coral Draw, and so on. Here's how the file looks in Adobe Illustrator. If there was a white background in the original design, it has been removed, leaving only the black design. As you can see, it's transparent, which is useful. Since it's also a vector, that means you can resize it, adjust the points to change the shape, alter the color, and so on. In this case, it's only one shape because the design has only one shape. Now, let me convert something more complex, like this Pixaroma text. After opening the SVG in Illustrator, you can see that each part is separate. Of course, you can group them if you want or create a compound path. Right now, it has many points, and I didn't find a setting in Comfy UI to reduce the number of points. This is usually not a problem, unless you're cutting with a laser or using other methods that could cause the laser to take longer to cut. If you go to Object and then Path, you can select Simplify and adjust the slider to remove some of the points. Just be sure to check the shape of the design so it doesn't change too much. Right now, it removed more than half of the points. You may also notice holes or other imperfections, which can be removed with the Direct Selection tool. However, this is a comfy UI tutorial, not a vector tutorial. If you have more questions, feel free to ask on Discord if you're interested. I have opened a FluxDev text-to-image workflow from episode 10. I added a prompt that I usually generate with ChatGPT. I include words like black silhouette of, followed by my subject, mention that it's on a plain white background, and add other words to guide the right vector style look I'm aiming for. If I run the workflow, I encounter a problem that you might sometimes see with FluxDev. Schnell and SDXL don't have this issue. Most of the time, I can fix it by increasing the number of steps to 30. 
So when I do vector work or anything on a white background, I just set the default to 30 steps. Now that we have the image in VAE decode and we've used the save image node to save it, let's add another node to convert that image into a vector. Most of the time, I use the black and white version. Then we need to save that vector file. So we add the save SVG node, but I also want to preview the SVG to see how it looks. So I add another node called vector to raster because we need to convert it back to a raster image for previewing. Then we add a save image node to save that, or you can add a preview node if you don't want to save it, but just want to see the preview. I change the prefix to make it easier to identify which node saves which image. Now, when I run the workflow, it saves the original image, the SVG file, and the preview image of the vector file. Let me show you what happens if I change the black color to red. When I run the workflow, I get a red cat as expected. However, the problem is that we only see some parts as a vector because we use the black and white node. It tries to select the darkest color from the image after it's converted to black and white. And in our case, the red becomes a gray color, which is ignored. I could add a color raster to vector node instead of the black and white one, then redo all the connections to go through that node. Now, when I run it, I get the color version of the vector design. I adapted the workflow so you can choose which node to use, the color one or the black and white one. I used a fixed seed, and now with this switch, you can enable the one you want to use. If I enable the black and white SVG node and run it, since the seed is fixed, it will convert the image to a black and white vector. If I want the color version, I can disable the first one, enable the color node, and run the workflow again to get the color vector. Alternatively, you can leave both enabled as it doesn't require much processing power and let it generate both versions. Let me show you how I use ChatGPT to get prompts for this style of vector graphics. First, I upload an image in the style I want and ask it to generate a stable diffusion prompt for that image. It gives me a prompt that I can use, but I prefer to ask it to remove the quotes and also provide it as a block of code for easy copying and pasting. Then I let it run until the black dot disappears. Now you have a copy button that will copy only the prompt. Let me ask for another one, this time for a bunny in the same style. I get the prompt, click copy, and then go to Comfy UI to paste it and run the workflow. I can change to a different seed, and if I enable the black and white SVG node, I can see the bunny's lines without the gray. However, I want a shape design, not a line design. So I go back to ChatGPT and ask for a black silhouette design instead. It gives me a different prompt, which I can copy and paste. When I run the workflow again, I get exactly what I asked for. With a little bit of adjusting the settings and prompts, you can create some great vector graphics. For those with low video RAM, I made this SDXL workflow using the Juggernaut model, but you can use other models that you prefer, especially those more specialized for vectors, or even add a LoRa for that. As you can see, it does a decent job. It's not as good as the Flux model, but if you can't run Flux, it's a good alternative. You could also use your sketches with image to image to achieve a vector style and then convert it to a vector. If you wanna do more complex work with vectors and have more control, you can use software that's specialized for vector graphics. I use Adobe Illustrator because it's the industry standard, but some prefer Corel Draw. Affinity Designer is a more affordable option, and Inkscape is free and open source. You can try a few of them and see which one works best for you. Comfy UI is good, but it doesn't offer as much control as vector software specialized for that purpose. For example, in Adobe Illustrator, I can drag an image in and choose different presets from the settings. Let's say I choose silhouette, and when I expand it, it expands all the colors and shapes. In this case, both the cat and the background, which was white, are converted to vectors. However, I don't just use default presets. I create some of my own. If I undo back to the image, I can select a preset I created or choose from existing ones. Then I go to this button to open more settings. I use these settings, which provide various controls for thresholds, paths, noise, and so on. If you check the ignore color option, you can select which colors to ignore, like the white from the background. Now, when I click on expand, I get only the shape with no background, resulting in a cleaner design. The design is much cleaner when I do it with these settings in Illustrator 
compared to Comfy UI. For those looking for an online solution to convert images to vectors, I found a website called Vectorizer AI. This is not sponsored, it's just one I use occasionally when I need to process a lot of vectors. You can drag an image onto the site and it gets processed, showing you the vector result. What I like about it is that it uses AI to identify shapes. So when it detects a circle, it creates a perfect circle. The result is much more optimized and smooth overall. For black and white clean designs, I get great results. However, for color images, I never convert them to vectors because they're too complex and require more work to achieve a clean design. It costs around $10 per month for unlimited generation. So if you do a lot of vector work, it could be a good option. I create vector SVG cut files for my shop and they need to be perfect. That's why I combine all the tools I use. I start by drawing my sketches, then adjust them using the pen tool and shapes in Illustrator, along with astute graphics plugins to clean up the points and make adjustments. That's all for today. Leave a like and a comment if you found something useful. Thank you legends for supporting this channel and helping me create more tutorials for everyone. A big thanks to the VIPs and all others who support with a membership or even a simple like. Have a great day and I'll see you on Discord.